From here on out, we'll be using Visual Studio 2012 to build a web application, although you can do everything I'm going to do with Visual Studio 2010 also, because ASP.NET MVC 4 will happily install itself into Visual Studio 2010, and there's nothing special I'll do with 2012. The application I want to build will be a simple application to manage the employees of a company. Every employee will be in a department, and I at least want the ability to list and add employees to a department. I'm going to primarily focus on the mechanics of ASP.NET MVC, and I won't go into any details on ancillary topics like unit testing. But I will point you to some resources on those topics when we get to certain points, because Pluralsight does have a vast library that covers everything else like unit testing, design patterns, and AJAX. One way to get started with ASP.NET MVC 4 after you install it is just to say File New Project, select the ASP.NET MVC 4 Web Application Project Template, give it a name, click OK, and you're off and running. I'm going to do something slightly different just to show you what the possibilities are. And under Other Project Types, Visual Studio Solutions, I want to start with a blank solution, actually. And I'm going to call this Solution eManager or Employee Manager, Electronic Manager, however you want to think of it. And now if I open the Solution Explorer window, I have a solution, there's no projects inside yet. Instead of starting with an ASP.NET MVC project, let's get started with a project that represents the entities and the business objects that I care about. So I will put those inside of a Windows class library which produces a DLL, which you can reference from other projects. And I'll call this emanager.domain or emanager.core. The idea is to have a project here, an assembly that I can reference that just has some C-sharp code inside of it for the objects that I really care about, things like employees and departments. Once this project is ready to go, we'll add some code in here to represent employees and departments. Let me delete class1.cs that comes here automatically. And let's instead add a new class called employee. I want employee to be a public class and every employee is going to have an identifier, an integer ID. Every employee is going to have a name, of course, we could also have first name and last name, but I'm just going to stick with name for now. And I think that's enough to get started with, actually. Let me also add a class to represent a department. And every department, this will also be a public class, is also going to have an identifier, is also going to have a name, and it is also going to have a collection of employee. So you can have zero or more employees inside of any given department. And before I forget, let me also add one more thing. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and make a selection across three different rows and then start typing. That's a feature that's been available in Visual Studio since 2010 that allows you to do a columnular selection. And I'm gonna add that to employee also. And the reason I'm doing this is because the Entity Framework can do very efficient change tracking and add additional features to an object if you make your properties virtual. We'll see that in a bit. And now let me add one more type inside of here. I want something that represents a data source. So maybe I could call this I department data source. And I'm going to put this inside of this assembly, this project, because it's really just an abstract interface definition that represents how you would get to employee and department information. Add properties of type iQueryable to this. That's something that you can query with link. These don't need to be public in an interface definition, but I want a queryable set of employees. I want a queryable set of departments and we really just need getters on here. We don't need setters. You just need to be able to get to employees, get to department. And chances are we'll need to come back and change some of these definitions later, but that's okay. Let's find out where we are first. We have departments, we have employees, we have a data source or an abstraction for the data source to get to the information about employees and departments. Now let me come in and add a new project. 
this one is going to be an ASP.NET MVC4 web application. And we can call this one eManager.web. When you create a new MVC4 application, you have your choice of templates that you can use to create that application. The empty template gives you a web application that really doesn't have much of anything inside of it. There's no scripts, there's no style sheets, there's no default views. So if you know exactly where you want to go with the project, the empty template might be for you. I'm going to select the internet application template. The internet application automatically comes with a home page and a layout view and some scripts and style sheets. It has an account controller that allows users to sign in, allows users to register for your website. An internet application assumes you're going to publish this somewhere on the internet. The intranet application offers many of the same features as the internet application, but intranet assumes you're inside of a firewall, you have Active Directory available, and your users will primarily come into your application as authenticated Windows users. There's also the mobile application project template, which we'll talk about in the mobile module of this course, and the web API template, which we can talk about in the web API module. So I will create internet application and select OK. Again, we won't be talking about unit testing. If you want to see more information about unit testing, there are a couple great unit testing modules and courses out there on Pluralsight.com. David Starr has done some of that work. I've done some of that work. I also cover unit testing in an MVC application in my MVC3 course. Everything in that course still applies to this course. And also I touch on it in my link architecture course, which talks a lot about how to build abstractions that make for a testable application. So you can see that project took a little while to create. And one of the reasons is this, if you've done any work with MVC in the past, you might be aware that the MVC project templates add a lot of things into your project, like the jQuery library and other libraries and assemblies. If you ever needed to go through and update jQuery, then you had to go out to a website and download jQuery and copy the library into your project. With MVC4, things are a little bit different. If you're familiar with NuGet, and again, that's another topic that we have available as a course here on Pluralsight, NuGet is an extension for Visual Studio that can help you manage dependencies and libraries inside of a project. And one of the files that NuGet will leave behind is a packages.config file that tells you everything that's installed into an application. And here we can see libraries, JavaScript libraries like Modernizer are installed. Libraries like the Entity Framework here are referenced as a NuGet package and not just a plain reference because that makes it very easy to update any of these components. I can go into Manage NuGet Packages after I right click on References. I can see what updates are available. And for example, if I wanted to update jQuery, Hopefully jQuery will appear as an update here in the list of potentially updated NuGet packages. There we go. I can update jQuery, jQuery validation, jQuery UI. I can update all these libraries really easily because they've been installed as NuGet packages with MVC4. But let me close this and just run the application to make sure we have something that is working. So I will set eManager.web as the startup project, hit Control F5 to run without the debugger attached. And this is our new MVC4 application. Let's talk about some of the structure behind this.